probability with combinations comes up very often in uh, games of chance because uh, the more sort of professionally people play games of chance, the more important it is for them to know the likelihood of getting whatever it is they need to make you know, their hand or their throw win. And the really, really, really best players, the ones who make a real living at that, are very good at calculating the likelihood of one particular option coming up out of whatever's left. So let's do an example of that. I kind of walk through it real quick here, and I'll uh, explain why or how that that sort of works out. If you were playing a, a card game, uh, say five card five card stud, say, um, and that means that you're using 52 cards, 52 different playing cards, and each one is unique. Um, say you've been playing it for a little while, and you've counted the number of cards that have been played, and you know that there are um, out of that 52 cards, there are 23 left. And in your hand, you have your hand is a um, you have an ace, a two, and a three. And what you want to know uh, is what are the chances that you can get the four and the five? You would want to get a straight flush. We'll assume that these are all the the same suit. Actually, doesn't. We'll just go for a straight. We'll just. We don't care about the suit. We'll just say that there. You have an ace, a two, and a three, and you want to know what the chances of getting the four and the five that it would take to make that into a straight would be. Well, if we know that there are 23 cards left, what you have is out of 23, you need to get the combination that involves the four and the five. So you need a combination of two cards. So we want to find out what are the, you know, how many different ways could you pick two cards so that we know what the total number of possibilities would be. So the remaining possibilities or the remaining different ways you could pick two cards would be this three choose two or 23 choose two. So to figure that out, we'd start by taking 23 factorial and dividing it by 23 minus two factorial or 21 factorial and then multiplying that by 2 factorial, which I know sounds really complex, but it's not really that difficult because the 23 and the or 21 factorial are pretty close together. All that's left are, you know, all the 21 and below are going to cancel up here anyway, all the, you know, the numbers below 21 down here. So all we're going to have left on top is 23 times 22. And then on the bottom, we're going to have 2 factorial, which is just 2 times 1, or 2. So 23 times 22, I should have run that ahead of time here. Let me get on my calculator real quick. 23 times 22 is 506. So there's 506 total possibilities. And since the order doesn't matter, and there's two cards, we divide that by 2, which gives us 253. So out of the 23 cards left, there are 253 different ways you could draw two cards. And since what you're looking for is a 4 and a 5, well, there are four suits each, right? So there's four fours and four fives. So that would be a total of eight cards. Yeah, and that would be a total of how many different combinations? Well, we're picking two. Now we're doing the same thing, right? We have a total of eight cards, and we are choosing two of them, right? So how many different combinations could there be? Well, there'd be eight factorial over six factorial times 2 factorial. So we have 8 times 7 on top, or 56, over, this is canceling, and the 7 and 6 and everything else is canceling, over 2, or 28. So there's a possible 28 different cards or different ways you could get the 4 and the 5 that you want to you know, be able to finish your hand. So your chances of being able to make this work would be 253, I'm sorry, it would be 28 divided by 253. So the probability of it happening, percent, would be 28 over 253, which is 0 0.11, and as a percent, that's about 11%. So your chances of it happening would be about 1 in 10, about 11%, of being able to get the two cards you want out of the remaining 23 cards in the deck. Now, that may not sound all that bad, but keep in mind that that also means that you have an 89% chance of not getting what you want. And that sounds quite a bit scarier, which is 
as it should be because that it would not be a good bet if you had ace two three and you knew you had to get four or five to win it's not a good chance that's going to be what you're going to draw so those are the kinds of calculations that separate winning poker players from poker players who always go home losing whatever it was they took to play with